Hi, my name is Alex Lesokin. I'm a medical oncologist specializing in multiple myeloma, uh, working at Memorial Sloan Kettering uh, in New York City in the United States. Uh, and I'm talking about the Magnetism 3 trial uh, that was presented at ASH in 2024, uh, where we presented the long-term update uh, and efficacy and safety of less frequent dosing of elronatumab in patients with relapse or refractory multiple myeloma. So elronatumab is a humanized bispecific antibody that targets uh, both BCMA expressed on myeloma cells and CD3 expressed on T cells. The Magnetism 3 uh, study was a multi-center open-label non-randomized phase 2 registrational study uh, of elronatumab monotherapy and BCMA naive uh, patients. Uh, it's been shown to induce deep and durable responses in this patient uh, group. Uh, here, the objective was re to report long-term efficacy and safety of l and bcma 90 patients uh, approximately 32 months after the last patient-initiated uh, treatment, including results uh, of switching to every four-week uh, dosing. Uh, eligible patients had relapse refractory myeloma that uh, was refractory to at least one IMID, uh, one or more proteasome inhibitor, and one or more anti-CD38 antibody like daratumumab. Uh, patients received subcutaneous elronatumab uh, in two step-up priming doses, followed by 76 milligrams weekly. And the primary endpoint was response rate that was centrally determined using uh, standardized criteria known as the IMWG criteria. Uh, patients were treated weekly on protocol for six cycles, each cycle being four weeks, so approximately six months. And those that achieved a partial response or better that lasted more than two months uh, were transitioned to every other uh, week dosing or every, Q2 week dosing. Uh, Q4 week dosing after another six months of Q2 week dosing uh, was also made possible in a post hoc uh, change. The data caught off uh, was uh, meaning the, the data presented uh, is uh, data analyzed through September 10th, 2024, uh, and has an average or median follow up of 34 months. So at this time, 16% um, or 20 of the patients were still receiving treatment. Uh, 58 patients had switched to every two-week dosing, and the uh, median duration of every two-week dosing was a little bit over a year. Uh, 28 patients switched to every four-week dosing, and there the uh, amount of time that folks were receiving that, amount, that dosing was approximately 12 months, uh, with a range of two months to 14 months. Overall response is as it originally presented, 61% uh, percent MRD negativity uh, was, uh, uh, rates were high uh, in 90% of patients among those that, have, that were evaluated, which is 31 of the patients. Um, among the patients uh, who switched to every four week dosing um, with uh, more than six months of follow-up uh, before the data cut, 93% uh, maintained their response, um, which uh, basically says that efficacy did not seem to be lost by reducing the frequency of dosing. Overall duration of response at 30 months was estimated to be around 60%. Uh, in other words, 60% of patients had ongoing response at this time uh, frame. Uh, it, among those that achieved uh, a complete remission or better, um, the rate of maintaining that remission at 30 months was almost 80%. Um, again, very durable uh, responses. Uh, the median progression-free survival time is 17.2 months. This is a measure of all individuals, including those that respond and don't respond. Uh, and the overall survival for the entire cohort uh, was 24.6 months. In terms of safety, there are really no new safety signals to report uh, with extended follow-up. Uh, unfortunately, several patients passed away due to progressive disease, a treatment toxicity, and one for patient for an unknown reason. Cytopenias uh, were common, meaning low blood counts with a low white blood cell count or neutrophil count uh, being the most frequent of these. Um, initial uh, like CRS, cytokine release syndrome, was observed in 57% uh, of patients, mostly low grade. Um, infections continue to be uh, uh, an issue with 70% uh, of patients having any greater infection, but the ones that I think are clinically important and that we should focus on are the grade three to four infections, which uh, were present in 41% of patients. 
So uh, th this is a busy slide, but this I think is just a, a an attempt to try to summarize what impact uh, every two week dosing or every four week dosing has on uh, treatment emergent uh, side effects. Uh, and so this is looking at side effects in the six months prior to the switch to every four weeks and the six months after the switch to every four weeks. And what I'd like to just sort of highlight uh, here is that at least numerically, there are some diminished uh, incidence of infection um, and also diminished incidence of um, uh, respiratory uh, disorders and cough uh, and diminished incidence of gastrointestinal disorders uh, with other things being sort of numerically unchanged. The numbers of patients here is rel are relatively small. So these do not achieve statistical significance, but the trends are uh, favorable. So I think overall, uh, the median duration response has not been reached uh, among the responding patients. Uh, and this was 61% after median follow-up of 34 months. Uh, for patients with who got to have more than a CR, the probability of maintaining a response at 30 months was almost 80%. Uh, MRD negativity rates in the valuable patients were about 90%. And following the switch from Q2 week to Q4 week dosing, the majority of patients uh, were able to maintain their response. Um, and the incidence uh, of uh, the serious grade three, four infections seemed to decrease numerically. Um, so I think the take home point here for patients is that if you are receiving alronatumab therapy, reducing the frequency of dosing to every four weeks may improve some safety signals uh, and it doesn't seem to compromise efficacy.